I'm going to begin by reading the first poem from the book. It's an aphrastic poem, a poem inspired, informed by a piece of art, and the title is the art piece. Uh, in this poem, I steal lyrics from a Prince song, Little Red Corvette. <laughs> and my nephew, my oldest nephew, likes to say that's the best part of the poem, but you can be the judge of that. <laughs> art Completion, Oil and Wood, Tina Rodriguez, 1999. Before nourishment, there must be obedience. In his hands, I was a cup overflowing with thirst. Eighth ruler of my days, ninth lord of my nights, he thrashed above me like branches. Once, after weeks of rain, he sliced a potato in half to remind me of the moon. The dark slept in the small of his back, the back of his knees, pale music. We'd crumble the Eucharist and feed it to the pigeons. Si vergüenza, a squinkler, he who makes things sprout. In the margins in a book of poems by Emily Dickinson, he scribbled. She had a pocket full of horses, Trojan, and some of them used. Often, I mistook him for a storyteller when he stood in the rain. A su izquierda, huesos. A su derecha, mapos de cuero. When I'd yawn, he plucked black petals out of my mouth. This next poem is titled Watermark. In this poem, I steal two phrases from Gwendolyn Brooks' poem, A Boy Breaking Glass. And in this poem, I also repeat the word socorro. And in Spanish, when you call that word out urgently, it becomes a call for help. And socorro also happens to be my mother's name. So you, you see what I did there, right? <laughs> I totally saw it. Watermark. In the dark, only the devil can cast a shadow. Too poor to afford lilies, she walked down the aisle holding a glass of milk. Her left breast is nicknamed Juan, the right Diego. <laughs> Nightly she catches moths with newspaper cones, hammock skipper, southern emerald, lungs black with cancer. Her father was buried two months before the wedding. Her name a tasso in my mouth, socorro, socorro. Rain pierced her womb when she was six months pregnant. Rain singed the face of her child, the burn marks turning into beauty marks. A beautiful flaw, terrible ornament. I keep a spur under my pillow to ward off nightmares. Too poor to afford lace, she walked down the aisle in a cold afternoon, her breath a veil. She arranges moth wings on a table, reads the wings like tarot cards, nine of swords, knight of coins. Her mouth waters when she hears a bolero. Her father was buried in pleated pants. Day after day, she folds and folds paper. Alas, parros. She gave me a pack of cigarettes on my 13th birthday. Often, I put on the gold ring she leaves by the sink. Not cathedrals, but presents. The first man she saw naked was the rain. The dark of her knees, a watermark. Socorro, socorro. If I dream I'm cupping her face with my hands, I wake up holding the skull of a wolf. I code switch a lot of my work. I shuttle back from English and Spanish. The Spanish is not italicized, put in context. There's no glossary in, in the back of the book. When I finished the manuscript in the summer of 2010, this was when I had a big fear that nobody was going to pick up this book. Nobody's going to read it because all the code switching, all the Spanish. A lot of my friends and mentors actually told me, take those poems out. Take those poems out, right? But you know, you had, af after a while, you have to stick to your aesthetic guns, right? And if language is one way of viewing the world, I just refuse to privilege one, s one way of seeing over another. This title is an on-ramp title, which means the title actually functions as a first line. In Colorado, my father scoured and stacked dishes in a Tex-Mex restaurant. His co-workers, unable to utter his name, renamed him Jalapeno. If I ask for a goldfish, he spits a glob of phlegm into a jar of water. The silver letters on his black belt spell sangron. Once, borracho at dinner, he said, Jesus was not a snowman. Arriba Durango, arriba Orizaba. Packed into a car trunk, he was smuggled into the States. Frijolero, a greaser. In Tucson, he branded cattle. He slept in a stable, the horse blankets oddly fragrant. Wood smoke, lilac. He's an illegal. I'm an illegal American. Once in a grove of saguaro at dusk, I slept next to him. I woke with his thumb in my mouth. No que no tornabas pistolita. He learned English by listening to the radio. The first four words he memorized, in God we trust. The fifth, percolate. 
<laughs> again and again, I borrow his clothes. He calls me Scarecrow. In Oregon, he picked apples, Brayburn, Jonah Goad, Cameo. Nightly, Trinitane Squates, around a campfire, he strummed the guitarra, sang corridos, arriba Durango, arriba Orizaba. Packed into a car trunk, he was smuggled into the States. Greaser, beaner, once borracho at breakfast, he said, the heart can only be broken once, like a window. No mames. His favorite, belt buckle, his favorite belt buckle, an aguila perched on a pal. If he laughs out loud, his hands tremble. Bugs Bunny wants to deport him. Cesar Chavez wants to deport him. When I walk through the desert, I wear his shirt. The gaze of the moon stitches the buttons of his shirt to my skin. The snake hisses. The snake is torn. I had a hard time calling my father an, my father an illegal in this poem. No, human being is illegal. It's absolutely a terrible term for anybody, any soul, right? The way I felt comfortable actually putting that word down on the page is by taking out the sting of it a little bit, linguistically, right? The L of illegal, the L of it, the l illegal, illegal, right? So I plugged in a beautiful L sounding word before it, right? To offset the hurt of that word, right? That's why lilac appears right before it in that, sen in that line. It's the only way I could do it. I was interviewed today by Michael on TV. It was a great interview. He was a great host. The host, I remember him as the host, with the mostest. Uh, he asked me about the, these poems, the acquired immune deficiency poems. And I, I'm going to briefly tell you what I told him, that I came of age at the height of the AIDS epidemic in a very small town in Arizona, Casa Grande, Casa Grande, big house in Spanish. Uh, there was no books about gays or the epidemic in the library. I searched, I searched, and asked nothing. So the only image I had of gay men were the images I saw on TV, you know, on Channel 12, Tom Brokaw, these men who are skeletal, kissed by death and public scorn, right? So growing up, coming into my own sexuality, I assumed that was the only possibility for me as a boy, death, right? And these are the poems in response to that. Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. At a quarter to midnight, blue beetles crawling along the minute hand of the wall clock, I awaken, panicked, next to my lover, a carmoid hued cello asleep on embroidered linen. A light bulb blazes, burns out, a doe's flash, a doe's flash of white tail that instructs the fawn to follow its mother in flight. I hurry down a hallway, through a door, into a pasture where mules are grazing. Moonlight floats in the air like coarse cloth, silver speckled and woven on the looms of mirrors. Once I tore into the torso of my cello and discovered its heart, a pair of horseshoes caked with red clay. The mules surround me, necks bent, nostrils pluming out different lengths of breath. I toss off my robe, a mule curls his tongue around my erection. I throw my head back and stare at the slowest lightning, the stars. I went this, this book came out about three years ago. <laughs> and when it came out, I sent a box home to my parents who are raising three of their grandkids. And the youngest, Oscar, was eight at the time. He asked, can I take this book to show and tell? <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. Please don't. Just slip off the, the cover. You could t take that. <laughs> this is the last p poem I wrote for the book. I wrote this poem uh, in a very specific way. It took me nine and a half years to r uh, finish this manuscript. Um, so when it got picked up, I went back home. I was at a, at a colony when I got the phone call. So after my colony time, I went home. I went through all these notebooks, you know, boxes and boxes of notebooks. and I pulled out every last image or phrase and line that still kind of resonated with me, that I wanted in my first book, and I stitched together a self-portrait, right? Because I had enough of these notebooks, right? Nine and a half years is enough, I said. <laughs> it's enough. Self-portrait with tumbling and lasso. I'm drum roll and voyeur. I'm watermark and fable. I'm weaving the snarls of a wolf through my hair like ribbon. At my feet, chisels and jigsaws. I'm performing an autopsy on my shadow, my rib, cage a, my rib cage a wall, my heart a crack in a wall, a foothold. I'm tumbling upward, a French acrobat. I'm judder and effigy. I'm pompadour and splendid. I am spinning on a spit, split in half, an apple in my mouth, 
I know what Eve didn't know. A serpent is a fruit eaten to the core. I'm a massacre of the dreamers, a terracotta soldier waiting for his emperor's return. When I bow, a black fish leaps from the small of my back. I catch it, I tear it apart, I fix the scales to my lips. Every word I utter is opalescent. I am skinned and orphic, I am scarlet and threshold. At my touch, a piano melts like a slab of black ice. I'm steam rising, dissipating. I'm a ghost undressing. I'm a cowboy riding bareback. My soul is whirling above my head like a lasso. My right hand, a pistol. My left, automatic. I'm knocking on every door. I'm coming on strong like a missionary. I'm kicking back my legs like a mule. I'm kicking up my legs like a showgirl. My niece loves to say, you are nothing like a showgirl. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say, poems can lie, <laughs> just like me. I'm going to end uh, with two new poems, drafts, I should call them drafts. A lot of the new work revolves around a broken heart, surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> a sensitive poet, who, who would have thunk it, right? A sensitive poet. Here's my advice to like, I've been going around the country saying this, like, if you're a poet, do not fall in love with another poet, most times, most times, uh, present company included. Um, <laughs> because if you do fall in love with a poet, they will use the language against you beautifully and brutally. <laughs> <laughs> and you know better, but you can't resist, yeah. So these, next, these, these two poems are to a Canadian poet. Damn you, Canada. <laughs> This draft is titled, Black Water. I spit his name out, and four wolves appear. Black, eyes silvery, ears like tapered ash. They thrash their tails twice, then rush toward me, a dark pouring. I stagger back, raise my arm. His name glints in the air, bright, brutal music. I'd watch him lather his throat once a, once a week, for a year, how the oval mirror held him, how it doubled his gestures, his hands quick and odic. The wolves now closer, close, their stench arrives first. Decaying meat, feces, an eye-watering stench that severs me from hunger. The wolves crash into me, furious paws, teeth hot and notched, manes teeming with dirt. Briefly, I'm fording black water. Briefly, I forget his face. Then they're gone. I spin around, nothing but sand and sky the color of clay. Even their stench is gone. Rattled, I tremble and tremble. My limbs raw, scarlet. Then I hear it, the mirror in a room miles away. Yes, I hear it. It too remembers him. Furred with frost and lust, it howls. This next poem is titled, Sentence. It kind of takes the logic of the guzzle and pours into a son sonic container. Sentence. I crawl back. He unpacks his tools, oils the wood handles, rinses the metal, fragrant his thighs, fragrant his sneer, Coy and eternity inked on his skin, in a static blue, a bewildered green. Some wounds are ovals, some wounds are opals. The ears of white wolf pivot toward the moon. I flee now and then, alone in the desert for months, a nomad in a kimono oppressed to gather dust. Beautiful his throat, beautiful his words. It's my turn to ask a bit more from you. He likes it when I bleed strangers once. Gently, he hammers gold into a sentence. Gently, the sentence enters me. Gracias. Thank you.